here's Ed Bernstein. Hi, well, hey, November the 23rd and 24th, we have a very, very special event at the Orleans Hotel. Lance Burton is back in Vegas. That guy, that guy's yeah, back? Oh back. my gosh, haven't we seen enough of him? Well, you know, I, I want to ask you about that, about having seen enough of him, because <laughs> You've done, 15, a couple, yeah, was, you've done a couple shows. Yeah, you've done a couple shows, right? 15,000 shows that yeah. you've done. Over, what, 5 million people that you've performed? That, that, well, the 5 of? million, that refers just to the my last gig. Right. Uh, at, the, at the old Monte Carlo Hotel. That was over, that was over 14 years. Uh, so total in my lifetime, I don't know how many people it's been. It could be, could be 10 million or more. You should have charged an extra dollar for each person. You put that right in my pocket, Lance. <laughs> Ed, the last time I was here on your show, I was checking the records. I, I still have it on TiVo, by the way, right. at home. The last time I was on your show was three years ago when we were having the world premiere of uh, my uh, film, my movie, Billy mm -hmm. Toppet, Master Magician. And uh, we raised $10,000 that night on the world premiere for local charities. And uh, I'm very excited to bring you a DVD that is for you uh, of the film. And also here is your official Billy Toppet Master Magician hat and the and very cup. rare, there are only, I want you to know oh, really? there are only How many? a dozen of these in Come existence. On. On. I, I had a dozen made, uh, your very own Billy Toppet Master Magician coffee mug. I, I love it. You know, you know what? Uh, you take my coffee okay. mug home with you. Okay, we, we, <laughs> will, you. Trade, we you. will trade coffee mugs. <laughs> You know, and uh, how did you ever get the name Billy Toppet? Um, here's what happened. We, we originally, my buddy Michael Goudeau and I wrote the screenplay. We originally called the character Lance. And then after we finished the screenplay, I said to Michael, we can't call the character Lance. People are going to think this is a true but story. You, or, but, but it's not autobiographical. No, no, right? it's, a, it's a work of fiction. And so then we started to try and find a name. Well, every, every name that we picked, you Google that name, and, and there's somebody that has that right. name. Uh -huh. And we kept thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to get, we're going to get in trouble. Um, so finally we just, we, Billy was from my father. His name was William Burton, but everybody called him Bill or Billy. Right. So that's, that was a natural pick. And Toppet is not a real name, but it's kind of an inside joke for magicians. And, and when magicians hear the name Billy Toppet. They all smile and laugh. So, how is the, the name Toppet an inside joke? It's it's well, I can't tell you because oh, uh, that's uh, only that's only for the magician. Right, so every you guys are always so secretive. And that's every, right. Every, it, like even the term um, Lance Burton, master magician. Master magician. What, no, right, right. So, what defines a master magician? Well, that's a good question. Um, basically. It, we think uh, uh, I just kind of made it up, master uh -huh. magician. But 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 the idea behind it is that it's someone who has accomplished all the different types of magic: sleight of hand magic, and illusions, and audience participation, right. and performing on television, performing in theaters. Uh, so that was kind of the idea. So like almost a uh, little certification. Huh? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And um, okay, now the Billy. Let's talk about the Billy Toppet since you brought it up. Yes. Okay, it's a movie you did a, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, and uh, it, it was completely shot on location here in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and uh, we we had the world premiere here in Las Vegas, and then a few months later, we were the uh, closing night film at the Wild Rose Independent Film Festival. And he won and an award. Right? We won the award for best family film, which was a huge honor. And and then a few months after that, uh, it screened at the Sanctuary Film Festival in Australia and won the International Family Movie of the Year Award. Uh, so it was very exciting. And then a few months after that, I released the film on uh, Amazon. So right. it's, it's available as a digital download and uh, as a DVD on Amazon. But I'm very excited. Uh, it's going to air on TV here in Las Vegas the day before Thanksgiving on your sister station, MyLVTV. 
from that, 8 to 10 o'clock. Right, and that is uh, on the 21st. 21st. Wednesday, the 21st. The 21st, day before Thanksgiving. Right. Channel 12. You can watch, uh, you can gather with your whole family. It's it's uh, good for the mm -hmm. for parents and kids and grandma can all watch it together. There's a lot of magic and it's a comedy and there's juggling and all kinds of uh, exciting things. We have a lot of guest stars in the film. Oh, here's the... Uh, Here, let's watch this. Let's watch yeah. the, uh, let's watch this. That's the, the night before Thanksgiving night before on Channel Thanksgiving, 12. Thanksgiving, and yeah. of course that was our good friend Robin Leach that did the voiceover mm -hmm. for that promo. Also appearing in the film is uh, Chris Angel, uh, Louis Anderson, Frankie Shinta, Jeff McBride, Johnny Thompson, uh, a lot of local entertainers, yeah. and, and all friends of mine. You know, I was watching the promo, and I, I remember you had that, uh, that automobile um, trick or delusion oh, oh. At, over at the, the Monte Carlo. Yeah, yeah, the, right. the trick with the car. With the car. What, what, what do you do with all the props? I still have all that, yeah. What do you, you need to store them in a big warehouse? Yeah, and, sure, I got them in a warehouse. I've got the vanishing car, the appearing car, the flying car. Uh, so, all right, so you hold on. Uh, what's the intent? I mean, you just hold on to them um, until one day it's like, okay, now it's time to get rid of it? Or? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm going to move it back to probably Kentucky eventually. Uh -huh. Like a museum? Type yeah, of make a, a little storage facility or a barn there mm -hmm. and, and let the chaos, you know, use it to relax. <laughs> and, and when you create create those um, props. Yes. Uh, uh, is that something that you can um, protect legally? I mean, can you trademark them or um, patent them? Or? It's real, from what I understand, it's really difficult to uh, patent a magic trick. Mm -hmm. uh, what some people have done, going back to uh, Houdini, is they have written their entire act out in, in like a play form, right. like a stage play and then they can they can copyright that stage play. I see. So if anybody tries to run off with All it, right. they can say, oh no, I've got it registered as a, as a stage play. So let's just talk about what you're going to be doing at the Orleans. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's Lance Burton and Friends. This is my brand new stage show. I'll be there. I'll be doing some of my favorite magic uh, with a lot of emphasis on audience uh, participation, audience interaction. Uh, but we're, I'm doing some sleight of hand magic, some illusions, uh, lots of audience interaction. Also, my friends are going to be there. Uh, Michael Goudeau, uh, F Fielding West, and Keith West and the Illusioneers. So, oh, here's a photo of, of the entire cast. So, And I think we have a promo of oh, this show. Oh, great. Too, right? this, this, let's take a look at this. He has been called the greatest stage magician of the past century. And now this legendary entertainer is coming to your town live and in person. And he's bringing his friends for an evening of magic, comedy, juggling, audience interaction and surprises. Don't miss Lance Burton and Friends live. Get your tickets now for Lance Burton, Master Magician and Friends. It's fun for the whole family. There, that, that's it. I so, mean, it's, so yeah. some guys, when they when they want to relax, they get right. their buddies and they go on a fishing trip, you know, and they go out into a cabin <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they go out in the boat with their rod and reel and they have a few beers with their buddies and that's how they relax. So, so when I get together with my friends, they're all entertainers. We we're always doing magic for each other or telling uh -huh. jokes and having fun. So I thought, well, if we're going to do that, why don't we just get an audience and do it in front of an audience? So that's how I look at it. This is sort of like a fishing trip with my buddies. Right, so is this a segue into performing again um, on a regular basis? No, no. this is it. 
<laughs> because, you know, because, I, I mean, you use the word retire. I mean, <laughs> theoretically, you're officially retired, but yes. you're not retired. Well, I mean, you're, you're performing around the country, and you do an occasional charity event. Well, look, I, I, you're talking to someone that worked for 30 years doing two right. shows a night, sometimes seven days a week. Uh, f for for decades so compared to that I'm completely retired mm -hmm. this past year I've done this show three times so this will be the fourth time uh, so that's that is retired compared to what I did before yeah is it, does it take a lot of um, work I mean, to re Re like if you're an athlete, you'd have to go back into training to do yeah, a show, sure, right? Sure, sure. What, what do you need to do when you're doing? It's, I mean, it's not like you're sitting there at the Monte Carlo seven days a week and you have, you know, you exactly. have a, a routine going on. I've, right? I've done, you know, since I've been retired, I've done enough appearances for uh, fundraisers and charities that when I walk out on stage, that all kind of comes back. That all sort of instantly, once I hear the audience, that mm -hmm. instantly all comes back. So that part, that part never went away. But it's just, it's, it's basically designing the show, you know, what is gonna be the running order of the show and what are all the elements. We've got this guy doing a comedy juggling act. We've got this guy doing illusions, this guy doing comedy magic, and this is what I'm gonna do. And how do you put all that together so it all makes sense. And then you have to put a crew together. Right? Yeah. I so, mean, so most of these people, I assume, have regular jobs and they're committed in other places. Sure, but the, that's, that's, the, that's the nice thing about uh, the Orleans. I know the crew there. I've worked there before on other different shows. And they're all, it's a great crew and it's a great hotel. If you haven't been to the Orleans lately, uh, they have a lot of new restaurants and amenities. Mm -hmm. They have a fantastic sushi restaurant there that I was at the opening about a year ago. Uh, they got a new place called Ballywick. So it's it's they've really been doing a lot of work over there and, and, yeah. and upgrading. That looks good. Actually, I'm there every other Thursday. Get a haircut there. No kidding. Yeah. At the, at <laughs> at the, the Orleans? Orleans? Yeah, absolutely. Where, where do you do that? Uh, get a haircut in a barbershop. Oh, I didn't know they had a barbershop. Uh, See? Hey, it's no, old I school. I learned something. In fact, the barbers there are the barbers that used to be at Caesar's Palace you know, 40 years ago. Very good. Yeah. It's real, very old school, but and they show, but the showroom is fantastic there. I mean, it's kind of similar oh, yeah. to the Monte Carlo, but the Monte Carlo you were able to build from the ground up. So yes. you, you incorporated everything you needed into that room. Sure, uh, but the the showroom there at the Orleans is a beautiful 800 seat uh, showroom, and I've worked that room many times before. Uh, for uh, oh, the last time I was there was for. Uh, uh, a fundraiser for the animals for the uh, uh, Sammy Shore did a fundraiser uh, called Funny Bones uh, to raise money for animal adoption. So it's a it's a it's a great it's a great venue. You've always been really great with children. Um, every time you do a show, you're always working with the kids. You bring the kids up. Sure, we like to with, use audience participation. Kids. I know you're a great inspiration to all my kids as they were growing up. Every one of them had, uh, had three girls. Each girl had a, a Lance Burton magic uh, kit and a, and a fake thumb. Uh, every, every, <laughs> I remember you used to come yeah. down to the, you guys used to see the show, yeah. then we'd do the interview in the green room, right. and the kids would yeah. all sit there yeah. listening listening to us do the interview. Yeah, I mean, my, my girls you know, grew up on you and were wooed by that. And, and you did a... Um, a number of years ago, you did a, a special with young magicians. Yes. Right. We, was that in a quest to look, for, search for talent, or? Yes. Yes. We did a show called uh, uh, Lance Burton Master Magician Young Magician Showcase, mm -hmm. and that I believe aired last night. Oh, when this yeah. airs. It will have aired this, last this night. This is going to be Lance Burton month on my LV TV. Right, I think do we have we have some uh, footage. Of oh the, yeah, of, now of here's some of the specials. Okay. Some of the specials coming. Coming out. to this station, don't miss this special television event. Lance Burton, Master Magician, starring in Top Secret, On the Road, Young Magicians Showcase, and Hocus Pocus. It's Fielding West. Coming to this station. Don't miss this special television event. H have you noticed, um, are young magicians different today than they were when you were growing into uh, the field? I love hanging out with the young magicians because they are really super enthusiastic about magic. And it really reminds me of why I got into magic when I was their age. Um, the young magicians today, have a little bit of an advantage over 
uh, my generation because they have so much more to learn from. You know, when I was starting out in magic, when I was a teenager, there were no there were no instructional videos, there were no VHSs or DVDs. There's no, you know, obviously YouTube mm -hmm. or internet. So we had to learn either from reading it in a book or personal instruction from from right. from, a, from another magician, someone yeah. that would show you how to, you know, here's a move, here's the way I do this move. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how you learned. But today you have those methods, but you also have, you know, the DVDs and videos, and the internet. So how do you feel about the internet? I, I assume that there's you know, solutions to tricks and illusions on yeah, the internet. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the the public makes a big deal out of the magic secrets. Magicians really, we don't, really don't. Uh, our, our focus is on the presentation, on trying to make magic right. uh, engaging and entertaining. Mm -hmm. So, th what the internet has done, it's made all art forms better because uh, if someone, if some kid in, in Yugoslavia comes up with a better way to do a trick, he can then film it with his iPhone right. and put it on YouTube. And now the kids in California can see it mm -hmm. and they can say, right. hey, look at what this kid has done with this trick. Let's try that. And, and so everybody, ev it raises, it elevates everyone's skill and everyone's thinking right. on magic. Right. It brings in a, it, a much wider audience yeah. and, and greater expertise and, from everywhere and, and, in the world. And that's, that's not just with magic. That's with every art form. Yeah. That's, that's with, you know, uh, juggling or ventriloquism or singing or, 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 or whatever it is, whatever it is you're into. Um, um, the internet's done nothing but elevate, elevate uh, everyone's game. Do, do you watch um, these like, shows like America's Got Talent? Do you look, keep your eye on the magicians up, I, up and coming? I, I I hear about them from my mm -hmm. friends, and I'll usually they'll usually send me a link if it's something exceptional, and I'll right. watch. Um, my taste in television usually go more towards the comedies or dramas. Mm -hmm. I, I watch very little of the the competition shows mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or reality TV. I guess I'm old school <laughs> in and, that uh, fashion. Right, but do you get called upon by up and coming young magicians? Oh yeah, to, sure. Hey, hey, you know, can you sure. give me some advice? Can you give me some tips? Sure, um, for about the last 20, 25 years, I've sponsored the Lance Burton Teen Seminar mm -hmm. uh, for magic. Uh, we started out here in Las Vegas at the Desert Magic Seminar, which was a yearly gathering of magicians that, that uh, went on for a couple of decades. But eventually that convention uh, sort of died off. But everyone said to me, Lance, you gotta, you gotta continue on with this Young Magicians program because that was like one of the highlights of the convention. So after a couple of years, we moved it to the International Brotherhood of Magicians annual convention. Uh, so, so that's something that that I've been involved with now for like 25 years. I, I remember in the, in the the old days in Vegas that um, every week the magicians that performed in and around Vegas would get together yeah. and go out. Oh, yeah. and, uh, uh, to, uh, they, they still yeah, meet they on still Wednesday meet. nights. Yeah. Uh, my good buddy Gary Darwin started the Darwin right. Magic Club over 50 years ago. Right. This was back in the 60s he started it. And it's still, they still meet every Wednesday uh, at Tommy Rocker's uh, from, from like uh, 8 to 10 o'clock. And uh, so all the local magicians get together once a week. Yeah, I, I once took a, a magic class from him at the university. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he was teaching for a few he, years. He told me that. Yeah, he told Gary, me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Louis Simonoff was the teacher. And then, yeah. and then right, he, exactly, they'd yeah. bring Gary in bring Gary. Yeah. as a guest lecturer at the yeah. end of the course. We, I was talking to Gary yesterday about this. I told him right. I was going to see you today. He yeah. said to tell you hello. Well, yeah. I mean, so is he still performing? I mean, he does very little performing now. Right. Of course, Gary is more into his uh, co collection. He collects magic props and magic books and has one of the largest private collections in the world. And he has probably the largest collection of autographed books. Right. Uh, because living in Vegas, every magician eventually comes through here. Right. So Gary would, would will gather up all, all of their books and posters and photos and, and, and get them to autograph them. I want to chat with you about the um, dexterity 
of sure. a, a yeah. magician and how much training and physical work goes into the fingers and the hands. Yeah, but you know, it's about like learning to tie your shoelaces when you're a kid. You have to do it a few times and then, then it becomes second nature. Right, I mean, but it's a few times. We're talking tens of thousands <laughs> of times. Because as you said, it's not really the trick. It's the presentation, it's the presentation. of the trick, right? Yeah, it's the, uh, I tell you what, when I was a kid, we used to, they used to have these uh, youth contests, you know, and I was, I think I was 17 the first time I entered a contest. And every year, of course, we would go and we would watch the contest to see what the other kids were doing. and. And uh, you, you always saw the kids that were really good on stage, you know, that would come out on stage, would make eye contact with the audience, would smile, would engage the audience, and, and they would click with the audience. And, and then you would see the guys who were really great with the dexterity, you know, with the sleight of hand, that were really precise with their movements. But sometimes you'd see a guy like that who never looked at the audience, never smiled. He, he, would, he would just be focusing right, right here, very serious the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it was a real lesson, because you, you would, as a young person, you would say, now that guy's got a lot of skill, but he's not very entertaining. He's, right. not, he's, uh -huh. he's not connecting with the audience on an emotional level. But this other guy who came out and was like instantly connected and, you know, told a joke or at least connected mm -hmm. with the audience, he really, the audience really dug him. Does it take a while for you to re-engage in that feeling? I mean, it's one thing when you're going seven nights a week. Now when you're doing, you know, three or four times a year. Right? Yeah. You know what? I, it, looking back, I, I, started, I started my professional career when I was like 18 or 19 years old. And then I walked off stage for the last time in my, uh, in my show when I was 50. So it was like over 30 years. So it, to me, it felt like I walked out on stage back in like 1979, and I did a show that lasted for 31 years. Amazing. Just and amazing. then I walked yeah. off stage. So now when I come back on stage, it's like, cause that, it's like that audience. I think of the audience. I don't think of it as you know 15,000 audience. I think of that as the audience. Right. That, and that's, that's, some, that's my friend. And so when I come back now, as soon as as soon as I walk out and I hear the audience, it's like, oh hi, yeah, I, yeah, I remember you guys. Nice to see you again. Is there any similarity when, to, in being a magician comparing it to like a professional athlete? As a uh, athlete is young, and you know they're using a lot of their physical abilities, and and um, as they get older, they use more sometimes their mental or sure. experiential um, 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 abilities, and because you, you know as you get older, your dexterity is not the same. Sure. So do you find yourself changing in that regard? Yeah, absolutely. You 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 find yourself drawing on your experience, uh, you know, from from all those decades and. Uh, I find myself when I'm on stage now going with the flow, you know, if especially I love the unscripted parts of the show with with the people from the audience, especially the kids, having right. the kids yeah. come up on stage and just interacting with them cuz you just you don't know that they'll always surprise you. That to me those are always the the best parts of the show is the unscripted parts of the show with the kids. I remember one time many years ago uh, I was doing the show and, and I had this cute little boy up on stage, he was like five years old, and I was talking to him and he was from England, so he had this cute little accent. Right. And I said, what's your name? He says, Miles. Mm -hmm. I said, how old are you, Miles? He says, five. I said, are you married? He says, no. And of course the audience laughs. Right, yeah. And I said, do you have a girlfriend back in England? He says, no. And I said, do you want to meet one of the girls in my show? <laughs> he says, no, we can't afford one of those. <laughs> and that was it. The audience just went crazy and and no one could say anything for like a full minute that people just kept laughing and laughing and this little boy he had no clue what he had just said he was just looking around like <laughs> I don't get it and it was it was just like such an honest you know real moment uh -huh. uh, you know that that still sticks with me years and years later you know some mornings I mean it, it's a weird thing I, I can wake up in the morning start washing my face shaving I'll drop the razor 
and uh, then I'll start getting dressed, and I'll, you know, and I'll drop something else. And I, I say to myself, you know, it's going to be one of those days <laughs> yeah. where everything I touch, I'm dropping. Yeah. If you're a magician, yeah. how do you deal with yeah, that? Yeah, I've had those. I've had those yeah. days. That's funny. Um, uh, it, it, it always seems like yeah. Every every audience has their own personality, and 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 every show has its own personality. Some nights you'll come out. And, and it'll just be hitting on all cylinders. Everything will be working perfectly. Right. But sometimes the audience will just be sitting there going, okay, yeah, what's next? <laughs> and then yeah. some nights you come out and, and you're not quite as good, but for some reason the audience is going crazy. Um, so it's the, those things are hard to understand, but right. I always, always, it's always interesting to me. Yeah, and what happens you injure your hand? I mean, just, you know, I mean, oh, you have those yeah. days, you know, and you just. Yeah, you still got a show's got to go on. You know, yeah. My, yeah. When I was when I was working when I was working uh, full time, I was doing a lot of intricate sleight of hand stuff, especially mm -hmm. the card manipulation. And if I got a little little cut on right. the fingers, man, that was a huge thing. That was that was like a football player, you know, p p pulling a muscle in his in his oh, leg sure, or, yeah. or injuring his knee. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, you can't tell that to anybody because they won't believe you. Well, that's just a little paper cut. And you go, yeah, but yeah. that's really <laughs> affecting what I'm doing. Absolutely, I can see that. So, all right, so let's talk about what you're doing at the at the Orleans. Uh, Orleans, 23rd this and 24th, Friday and Saturday, and also, weekend. also it's it's the day after Thanksgiving, and also we are using the occasion to raise a little money for the uh, Variety Children's Charity of Southern Nevada. A portion of the proceeds is going to Variety, an organization I've been involved with for 25 or 30 years. And as I was telling you before the show, the old timers will remember Joe Delaney from Las Vegas right. Sun. Joe's the one that got me involved in Variety. And we are we are just about ready to open uh, our new all-inclusive park here in Las Vegas. It'll be the first one in the city. We're building a variety is building a park where kids who are disabled in wheelchairs can play uh, in the specialized equipment with their siblings or their friends who who are not disabled. And it's uh, we're very excited about. Uh, opening that. So it's a great cause. Hey, it's a win-win. You get to see Lance Burton, you get to help these kids at the Variety uh, Club, right? It's not called Variety Club anymore though, right? It's called something else. Uh, Variety Children's Charity right. of Southern Nevada. <laughs> yeah, it used to be the old days it was a Variety Club. Thank you so much, Lance Burton. Uh, at the Orleans Hotel, Friday, November 23rd, Saturday, November 24th. Don't miss them. Enough said. Call Ed. EdBernstein.com.